Hello, and welcome to this pre recorded feedback event for the BTEC Next Generation Art and Design 2015 examination for Unit 7. Recording for Creative Intentions in Art and Design. To help you get the most out of this feedback, you may want to have the following documents handy, as we will refer to them during the session. You should have the unit specification, which will give you the structure, content and additional guidance to help you deliver your course successfully. The mark scheme is essential for you to be able to assess your students' work accurately, using the correct criteria and against the national standards. The mark scheme can be found on pages 128 to 132 of the specification. If you have a marking guide, which is a document combining the three marking documents, you will find that useful. The Lead Examiner's Report Although this presentation is largely based on the Lead Examiner's Report, there is additional visual material and supporting comment. The report itself will give you helpful feedback about this year's entry and outcomes. And the question paper issued back in May 2015 and used for this year's externally set assessment, which is referred to throughout this presentation. During this training event, we aim for you to consider the following points. Receive feedback on national performance of students of the June 2015 examination series. Consider the ways in which students responded to the question paper, how well they were prepared, and how they answered the questions. Expand on aspects of the examiner's report. Consider delivery strategies and share good practice. Identify, highlight, and address common issues. Find out about further support available. It is important that teachers are familiar with the specification and that students get the opportunity to read through the whole exam paper themselves and have flexibility regarding the questions they choose to answer. This choice should be informed by the specialist skills and pathway experience they have had on your course. This external assessment is effectively a creative brief, and each of the questions includes a list of client expectations. By the time they get to take the externally set unit, students should understand what these expectations mean and how they will impact on their work. Examiner's Report and Lead Examiner Feedback, June 2015 Please take some time, if you have not already done so, to read the examiner's report. Do not strain to read the text. It is more relevant to obtain a feel for what the submissions contain and look like. On this slide, you can see the work of a variety of students operating in the merit band. There are examples of initial thoughts, reasoning, recording and design development in visual arts and photography. The approaches differ considerably and indicate house branding. That is to say, the work may be identified by the approach of individual centres. There are examples of development of ideas through experimentation with mediums, straightforward recording by drawing in ink and in pencil, a mounted page of a step-by-step -step approach starting with photos of the objects provided, a spider diagram, recording and annotation. The photography example shows an approach using the computer for layout image manipulation, and word processing. We shall look at more work from the top left student later.
Here the student is operating in the pass level and has given us reasons and linked them to the brief. If you can zoom in, then you could read the writing. The reasoning is somewhat simplistic, but justified. Reasons are not diverse, since the idea is the same. The student misses the point of recording to elicit information, and thus generate design ideas. Instead, the recording is made after the idea. This could work well, but potential novel ideas are unlikely to evolve. There is an enlargement of the writing on the next slide. This example you will recognize is from the same center as the one you saw on the first slide. This is the first sheet from a merit level example. What is good here is that the student gives reasons for choice, explaining briefly what potential there may be, and then gives a highly comprehensive constraints of the brief. Here we see thinking which is evidently a direct reflection on what was taught. Photographs of the objects the student proposes to work with are included. This enlargement shows the student beginning to give reasons linked to potential designs. In themselves, they are not sufficiently diverse to warrant merit level but do satisfy the criteria of reasons, note plural, for level 2 pass. Again, from the same centre, this time we are provided with carefully recorded photographs, salient reasons for choice and recording through drawing. Another student moves on from the initial recording to work in other mediums, including print, thus adding to the design potential of the imagery. The writing gives evidence of understanding of the formal elements. You may like to take some time to read this. The student clearly wishes to satisfy the reviewing and evaluating progress part of Criterion A2. In fact, it begins to justify communicating creative intentions, which is criterion 2b. The text is descriptive of processes, rather than reviewing the progress to inform creative intentions. That is to say, plenty of what I did, rather than why I did it, or what the qualities were of what resulted. This example is from a student who wishes to have an ecological outcome based on trees. The brief was for an artwork to be shown in an exhibition. You saw images from the submission on the first slide. The reasoning is relevant and diverse. The thinking shows consideration of the brief and the recording elicits information about the objects. The reasons given do show some justification and are starting to move towards full justification. Here we have a page of recording in a variety of mediums, and they are of quite good quality for this level. It is a pity they do not move on from here to show differing viewpoints and or different objects. Had the student chosen to enlarge or combine the images, then greater design potential may have been seen. Students did well, where they managed to give good reasons for choice of object by referencing that choice to design possibilities, and thereby showing the relevance of choice to the chosen brief. That is to say, they were able to justify their choice which is criterion A, merit or distinction. Where there was a range of media and approach to the recording, better submissions often resulted. Students tended to perform well in recording, using drawing and photography, and some using more adventurous methods, such as direct printing from the objects, rubbing techniques, photomontage, monoprint, 
or direct dry point on acrylic. Where there was evidence of understanding of process in design development, and this was related in reflection and evaluation to the brief. Where the work evidenced specific teaching of the fundamental elements of the unit, rather than as an aspect of other units. The work in general could be improved through the teaching of the fundamental elements of the unit separately, rather than as an aspect of other units. Two very different design ideas from another submission of Distinction Standard. We can see creativity as the student manipulates materials through composition and experimentation towards design ideas. We are given annotation, evidencing thought processes. This example shows work on the border of merit and distinction. The student has used one image, and whilst we, as art teachers, may find it hackneyed, it is new to the student. The image is being developed into design ideas by manipulating the background, mediums used, and composition. The distinction descriptor says that, quote, ideas at this level will demonstrate a personal, and refined judgment that takes developmental work to a creative level. This shows some evidence of that. Here is an example of work by a student following a photographic brief. The work shows a considered approach to development, and justification and review are present. Colours are changed to address the ideas towards satisfying the brief, and a rather different method of combining images has been used. Moderators have reported several instances of misunderstanding, particularly on the part of centres offering the photographic pathway. In this pathway, students must obtain their images from the objects provided and operate under supervised conditions only. Imagery made in the preparatory period must not be available, nor may it be used. In this image, the student has given us a spider diagram in respect of the brief, but has failed to understand the principle of primary sources and has chosen and pasted onto the page an item of ephemera rather than rendering an image. Had the bag been crushed and rendered, then a different outcome would have secured marks. In this example, the student begins with a diagram, then moves on to literal, repetitive and superficial variations on the same idea, rather than using the images to inspire ideas. We are provided with photographic, watercolour and coloured pencil images of two objects. We are also given reasons for choice and an evaluation. This is of level 2 standard. This student has not, however, understood the fundamental point of making an informed choice based upon the brief and the design potential of the objects provided. Rather, the choice is made, we are told, because the objects are recyclable and they are green. Neither of these gives any indication of design potential. Whilst they are clearly reasons, they are not indicative of an understanding of the principles behind the choice. The reasons are bland and limit the submission to level 2 pass, whereas the images show potential of a higher grade.
students tended to perform less well in giving reasons for choice of object. Often reasons for the choice of a medium were given instead. Where only one reason is given, this limits grading to level one, or if reason or reasons are missing, the work must be ungraded. Students lost marks by failing to consider how their drawings could lead to design ideas. Therefore, they did not inform creative intentions. Those creative intentions were often not documented or evidenced. Most students showed an understanding of drawing as a method of recording. Some were of a high standard, but few interrogated objects or sought to glean relevant information from them. Students often fail to consider what the brief was asking them to do. Client expectations were effectively ignored, and aspects of communicating, time planning, documentation, reviewing, and evaluation were not in evidence. Some students chose to work in a pathway of which they had insufficient experience. Others even worked in multiple pathways. Work could be improved. If teachers and students had a better understanding of the specification, students should give pertinent reasons to show their thinking related to designing, and how that affects the choice of object to study. Here are the first two sheets from a borderline distinction submission. The objects, as provided by the centre. Have been photographed. This is a condition of this paper, where centers are required to provide evidence for the moderator of what was provided. It is not necessary to have this on every submission. We are told about the brief. A variety of mediums are used, and other glass objects are subsequently selected to augment the design process. The reasoning is not of distinction level, since it lacks. Full justification. It does, however, show some justification. Here we see the next page of the submission. The work moves on into other mediums and works through potential ideas. The student is making informed decisions. There is additional recording. Application of selected materials, techniques, and processes. There is evidence of an imaginative approach, review, and evaluation. These are level two distinction criteria. This is an enlargement from the previous slide. Here is the final page. You may like to zoom in on the writing, but the overall presentation is what is important. A considerable volume of work has been produced. It is well documented, and we have design ideas, some of which have been developed. There are reasoned judgments, review, and evaluation. The work is certainly diverse. This satisfies the majority of the distinction criteria. This work then lies just below distinction, since if a criterion is only partially met, the work must be marked in the band below where it will be fully met. For learning aim A one, we are given valid reasons for choice of object. The choice is diverse and appropriate to meet the brief. There is some justification given for the choice. Had the reasons been given in greater depth and showing greater understanding for choices, a higher mark would have been appropriate. This is typical of the type of work generated towards this objective. For learning aim two. A variety of approaches have been undertaken, and the evidence for them is good. 
there is a step-by-step approach, proving coherency in both the images and thinking. Annotation is clear, evidencing review and progress towards the brief. For learning aim B, there are several ideas indicating diversity. Creative intentions are communicated, and the requirements of the brief have been met. The design ideas are all reasonable, but lack the imaginative and comprehensive generation and development required for the next level. Successful students had been taught to understand the concepts behind this unit, carefully considered client expectations, and design satisfied the client requirements. All aspects of the assessment criteria were addressed and well evidenced. Objects were chosen with reference to design possibilities, and recording was such that they obtained relevant information from the objects. Annotation provided additional evidence of the thinking behind decisions and of review and evaluation. Design ideas were generated, some were developed, and intentions were clearly communicated. The volume of work is not an issue. To achieve well, it is not volume, but the quality of work that scores. The students did not do well, where students tended to do the minimum rather than work in depth. Students gave only a single reason. This limits the grade to level one. Often their reasoning failed to show understanding of why an object may lead to ideas and that idea generation potential. Reasons were often descriptive rather than informed. Recording failed to elicit pertinent information. Students worked in unfamiliar pathways. Many students showed a lack of understanding of the process required of them, that is, three steps, thinking, obtaining images, and designing. The brief was not understood or in several instances more than one was followed. Information in the form of annotation was generally descriptive rather than informative of creative intentions. The submissions could be improved by learning the specific processes required by this unit, having a wider understanding of the specification and providing tangible evidence. The most common reasons for failure in this unit are the student missed one or more of the criteria, the brief was not considered, recording was missing, the quality of stimulus material, objects, was poor, centres did not provide the stimulus materials, allowed access to internet or printed materials, and allowed prep materials to be used. The students had not practised. The students were unable to give valid reasons and gave reasons for choice of brief and mediums that were simplistic and quite often these were completely lacking or difficult to find. Frequently found issues are Moderators frequently reported there was evidence of a lack of understanding of the requirements of this unit. Some centres believe that this unit can be achieved with little specific experience of those requirements. Centres were surprised that BTEC Next Generation is not easier to pass than other L2 qualifications. And when less able students had been entered, that they had not fared as well as expected. Centres were surprised at the considerable effect of poor performance in this unit upon the resulting grades. Marking was often lenient. Grades were awarded without evidence of some assessment criteria, 
and assessors appeared unable to transfer knowledge of national standards from other qualifications. The three documents for assessment were not used, that is, assessment criteria, grade descriptor and fine-tuning grid. These are combined in the marking guide. This unit can be taught as a standalone unit, or effectively linked to other units, but the specific and fundamental aspects of the unit have to be taught. The aspect of reasons can be taught in a variety of ways. Class discussion is often very effective, as are individual tutorials and workshops. Students should be challenged to think about how their recording will be used and to give evidence of that thinking. If it is not taught, students will not pass. The specification explains that any medium can be used for recording traditional, photographic and digital. Where a variety were used, results were often superior. Regardless of context, it is important to provide a variety of materials and resources, and for students to have experience of their use. Where technology was used, results were often superior, but not always. The exam must be conducted to comply with JCQ regulations and students must not have access to the internet, personal electronic receiving devices, or other external stimulus material, including printed matter, in the exam. The way students have responded to the paper has been commented upon in the lead examiner's report. This presentation is an additional resource for you to use to help understand the requirements of the unit and to see what sort of responses were produced by students and how they were marked. Some of the information from the report has been used in this presentation and if you are able to spend some time reading it, I am sure it will help you gain further understanding. For further support and feedback relating to this external assessment, please visit our dedicated BTEC results web pages via the link shown here. There are a range of further training events available, which will also be useful in providing support and guidance with the delivery of this qualification as a whole, and these can be accessed via the link shown here. Any questions? These should be emailed to Susan Young. And finally, to access lots of useful support and resources for BTEC Next Generation Art and Design, make sure you visit the subject page. Just email Susan Young to join the mailing list. We hope you have found this session useful. Please take the time to complete our short online survey regarding this recording, as we very much value your feedback. Thank you for your time.